Bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highway and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were called shall taste of my supper. Those words there mean to experience a unity, to experience a marriage. There, this, this whole parable talks about a, a time of fellowship, a time of feasting with God. And when he's calling us and moving us into not just the calling, but into that secret place, what are we doing? Making excuses. I don't have time. Oh God, give me my time later. He wants us to experience that unity with him, that fellowship with him. And again, I know there's a lot of people who don't know what they're called to. Well, when you spend that time with him, you will find, he will start to unfold to you what, what that time or what that call is. Again, when I think of excuses, I think of leaves that fall in autumn. They just clutter your path. They clutter the path that you're walking and you don't know where you're going, what you're doing, why you're here. You, you feel like you've got no purpose. And, and also, when we look at this parable, I see that it reveals a task that's to be done, and God's just looking for willing vessels. One thing I know to be true is that behind every excuse that we make, it's what I call the biggest idol known to Christians, and that's self. We're always thinking of ourselves, about this flesh creature, how we can please it, how we can satisfy it. Um, quickly, I want to just look at Moses, because we know Moses had a lot of excuses. And that's actually his form. I'm not going to labor on this, because it's a lot there, but we're just going to touch a little bit on his excuses. Starting in verse 10, chapter 3. Um, chapter 3, starting at 10. So we've got, you know, the Israelites are crying out to God again, and God's raising up a deliverer and so forth, and the Lord appears to him out of a burning bush and speaks to him. Here's Moses minding his own business. He's already run. You know, I don't know how long he was at with Jethro. Um, I didn't look into the history of that, but um, here he was, you know, he was a murderer. So here he was in hiding, and he was just minding his own business, and out of the bush speaks God. And over to verse 10, the Lord says to him, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. God is always looking to raise up a deliverer, even in our time. It may be in your community, it may be in your neighborhood, it may be at your workplace. You are a deliverer. You may be a deliverer to your children, but God is always raising up somebody to deliver his people from sin and bondage. And what is Moses saying? His first excuse. Who am I? Who am I, God? In other words, I'm not qualified. I can't do it. There's excuse number one. God's promise to Moses after that, he says in 12, certainly I will be with you. I will never leave thee nor forsake you. That's the promise that we have even today. You know, we look at our fears. We look at our insecurities as to why we can't do certain things. But God says he will always be with us. Chapter 4, verse 1, is the second excuse. And Moses answered and said, after God gives him the plan of what's going to take place and where he's going to go and how he's going to do it, Moses answers and says, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto me. That, that was one of my excuses. They're not going to listen to me, God. I don't know how to speak. I don't know, you know, I'm not an eloquent speaker. And I had an experience, actually, uh, I don't know if I ever, ever shared this, but it was when I started going to Good News. I've got a lot of good memories. <laughs> um, a lot of growth happened to me at Good News. And um, Merv had asked me to speak. He said, I'm putting you on the calendar in six weeks. Well, you know, I went home. I was so distraught. Oh, my gosh, I thought my life was coming to an end. I sat in my kitchen so depressed and because right away I was flooded with every insecurity, every fear, every thought that, that had ever come against me in, in regards to how I saw myself. 
And a lot of that was self-rejection, which praise God I've been healed of. But so here I was sitting in the kitchen, and that was it. I said, God, I can't do it. I cannot do what what Pastor Murph has asked me to do. Well, then he, the Lord said to me, I want you to go to Exodus 4. And I didn't know what Exodus 4 was. So I read, I started reading. When I got down to verse 10, and Moses said unto the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Third excuse, this is. Neither hitherto for nor since hast thou spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and I'm a slow of tongue. In other words, it was like he was saying, I can't talk, God. I can't do it. Get somebody else. And when I read that, this I felt like this, and the only way I can explain it is like a net fell on me. That's how sometimes I feel the presence of God will just draw on me. And I felt so grieved in my heart. It was, a, it was like a spirit of repentance came on me because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be disobedient to him. Because at that time in my life, I was so hungry for him and I wanted to just please him. It was the beginning of change in my life. So I said, I'll do it. And nothing's ever been the same for me after that. So he doesn't, how's that saying though? I think Pastor Mervis said it. He doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. <laughs> And he's just looking for willing vessels. And, and I believe we're going to meet even in this ministry because I, I'm believing that there's going to be a lot of women coming from the outside in into this ministry. I believe it with all my heart. And uh, again, I can't do it all by myself. No. So that was the third excuse for Moses. And then over to the fourth excuse in chapter 4, verse 13, he said, Oh, my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou will send. In other words, what he said was, Lord, go and get somebody else. And God got angry. God got angry at Moses in verse 14, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And then he said, can, go get your brother, and I'll speak through your brother, and, and then the story goes on. I can only imagine the frustration that God must have felt. because, And, and he probably still feels like that with a lot of us when we give him excuses. And again, not just to the call of God, but to that intimacy and spending that time with them. And then we have Gideon. Gideon's another story in Judges 6. But we won't uh, labor in that also. But they needed a deliverer because Israel was taken in by the Midianites and they were greatly oppressed in poverty and in, um, in attack from them. And they needed this deliverer, so Gideon was hiding. We'll just look at verse 11. I want to touch on a few things in there. Judges 6. It says in verse 11, And the angel, there came an angel of the Lord, and he sat under an oak, which was in Oprah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abiyar Zite, and his son. Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it, from, from the Midianites. Now again, if you look at that scripture, the word it is in italics. So it was added by man. So if you look at it, you're going to read it, and you're going to see that Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide from the Midianites. He wasn't hiding the wheat. He was hiding himself from the Midianites. And many times we, we hide from the enemy. And what's the enemy? Self. Fear insecurities. And I believe that's what happened to Gideon. He saw the battle raging, he saw the oppression going on in his people, but he was too concerned with his insecurities. And then we look here at verse 12, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with me. And what that really means is the power of the Lord is upon him. So when God calls us, the power of the Lord is on us. He, he has equipped us to move in the power of God to whatever he's called us to. And then he says, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And again, I have to give another testimony of good news. Uh, Pastor Verb had called me out on a Sunday night, um, and I can still see it to this day. And he started to prophesy to me. He said, he said all I remember him saying is that I was like Gideon, threshing behind the, the wine press, a mighty woman of valor. Didn't even know what that meant. You know, I didn't know what that meant up until not too long ago. The Lord had brought it to my attention. And we're all mighty women of valor. And what that really means, to be a mighty woman, no gender in God, right? 
A mighty woman of valor is facing the enemy full face.